Hey guys, it's Yorkie here and welcome to Season 3 of the Apex Online Racing League. This is the first round we're racing at the Nürburgring and as you can see the conditions are pretty dire. We're in the BMW Z4 GT3 car that I'm going to be racing for this season. We're currently coming towards the end of the qualifying session and I'm going to be showing you my qualifying lap. As you can see we have about four and a half minutes left of this qualifying session. I've just come out of the pits and currently doing an outlap. We've got a couple of cars just in front of us on a flying lap. So I'm going to be aiming to give myself a little bit of breathing room to the guys in front to do my actual lap. The gap isn't too bad, the guys are very very quick anyway so you can follow about this sort of distance and not have it impact your lap too much. As you can see my fastest lap at the moment is a 203.908 but that's only good enough for 13th position at the moment. So the guys are banging in some very very serious lap times and at the moment where I am on the grid is not great that's not where I want to be starting ideally I'd like to be starting in the top 10 something that I can work with but at the moment I'm a little bit shy of that so here you can see applying the brake whilst accelerating at the same time and generating some heat into the brakes the tyres aren't too bad in terms of temperature obviously the pressures will be increasing and coming up towards optimum and that slide through the chicane there wouldn't worry me too much. It's this corner here that I need to nail. So trying to get a decent run out of the apex. A tiny little bit of oversteer on the exit there. Whilst trying to get the power down. But using the full width of the track. And that was quite easily manageable. So now on the run down to turn 1. We've got a decent gap to the car in front. We're going to hang to the left hand side of the track. Breaking just before that 100 metre board. All the way down into first gear. Turning the car in. Picking up the throttle rather nicely there. Not having to correct the car upon the exit. Bring the car over to the right to open up turn two probably not as tight to the curb on the inside as I could have been however the exit was good nice and smooth braking and easing the car into the apex of turn one hooking that up nice and late which opens up this right hander getting a decent exit probably running a little bit wider on the exit there than I would have liked to all four wheels probably dipping just outside of the white lines there start a set to two now going well so far using first gear to try and hook the car in towards the apex a little bit of oversteer on the exit there and had to give a quick flick of correction to bring the rear end back in check now coming into the hairpin I do believe I was down on my first sector previous best it didn't come up saying I set the new fastest sector time however the hairpin was very very good nice and smooth all the way throughout Schumacher S's Getting the apex hooked up quite nicely, avoiding the first curb and then running the second, which is exactly what I wanted to be doing. Where am I in sector two? Setting a new faster sector two times. So that's only for myself, it's only a personal best, but even still quicker than my fastest lap so far. So looking good and very, very nice lines and smooth runs through those first two corners in the start of the sector three. It's just a case of nailing the shifts coming up towards this final chicane and nailing the braking point here. Braking hard and shifting down into first gear. The rear end of the car stepping out, causing me to go over the curb on the inside on the left hander. The second part wasn't too bad. I would have had the wheels touching the white lines on that. The first bit though, it was a little bit questionable. It took a little bit more off of that than I would have liked to. Obviously the rear end of the car causing me to turn in a lot, lot earlier and the final corner was very nice and smooth but that lap turned out to be a 203.07 as you can see and that's put me into 6th position however there is 1 minute and 15 odd seconds left of the session to go which means that someone could quite easily take that 6th position from me however I don't have enough time for one more lap so I'm going to go back to the pits and here are the results from qualifying. So in the end, I ended up in 7th position. RC Monster managed to slip himself up into 6th. F1 Massa managed to get himself pole, so he's going to get a single point for that, with Karki in 2nd and Mini Black in 3rd. Obviously myself in 7th and my teammate Andrex in 10th position. But probably one of the biggest upsets of this qualifying session was down here in the second half of the qualifying leaderboard. And that was Tony R down in 17th position. One of the fairly big names from ESL. He was one of those considered to do fairly well in AOR for this season. But it'll be interesting to see how he can recover from there. Now there's only one thing left to do and that's kick this season off with our first race. 
So here we go then, first race of this 10 round season starting in 7th position. I've got the inside for turn 1 and hopefully we can get a decent launch off the line and possibly gain a place or two just waiting for the green light green, green, and launching green. the car rather nicely off the line. Getting a little bit of wheel spin, it doesn't look like I quite got the drive that the Audi has behind me who's now on my inside. I felt a little tiny bit of contact there so I did back off the throttle which has gone and dropped me down into ninth position. So I've got cars to my left and also my Still right there. I think is now clear so can take the inside Still line there. it looks like no one's made any contact so far all looks line. like we've got through pretty smoothly now into turn two I've got Hold a car on my inside I can hear the crew chief yeah, telling me that there is a car there tiny little bit of contact as we did go three wide initially and then down into two I didn't realize that okay. I Let's do believe there's a car on my inside no he has dropped back behind me so I've now gone and slipped myself into eighth position I did drop down into ninth momentarily so not a great start I've lost one position overall however my teammate Andrex has had a pretty decent start and has got himself up into ninth position and he is right behind me we've got two roofs just in front as we're coming in through the start of the second sector now you can see the amount of spray making it very very difficult to see the track and also the cars in front who unfortunately have got their headlights on which does allow us to see the other cars a little bit better but now that we've got the first couple of turns out the way, I just want to try and settle myself down a little bit, try and maintain the gap to the guys in front, see if we can try and keep Andrex behind me for the moment and see if we can work together and try and work our way back up through the field and see if we can gain any more positions. As it looks like there was an Audi there looking fairly That's slow, may have got a cut track penalty going through the Schumacher S as both me and Andrex have slipped past him prior to the end of the second sector and it's like we closed the gap a little bit to Tipple right, and the clear. other roof that's just in front of us getting right up onto the rear of Tipple now going to see if we can try and get a decent run up towards the chicane as Andrex in the rearview mirror is right underneath our rear wing now dropping back a little bit doesn't look like we're going to be able to make a move into the chicane here so we're going to settle in behind and just try and take our normal line however the spray is making it so difficult to try and spot out the curbs down in front of us and it looks like a couple of the guys there may have taken a little bit off the inside of the chicanes definitely a lot more than they would have liked to but getting a fairly decent run through the final corner and it looks like we're dropping back a little bit from the tipple have gone for a very downforce orientated setup for this race obviously with the wet conditions i want to try and get myself as much grip and stability as possible going a little bit deep there into turn one Missing the Car apex lights. completely. I now got Andrex on my outside somewhere. Still I just heard him from the uh, right. from the crew chief. Can't actually see him there. He is popping up in the rear view mirror. He's going to have the inside for this the turn outside. three though. So I'm going to let him slide up Clear past left. and not really fight it. And we'll see if Andrex can mount a challenge to the guys in front of me. As you can see, Alex is behind. It looks like Andrex has got a fairly decent run compared to the roof on the exit of turn four there he's going to have a look around the outside he's going to try and hang it around the outside in fact it looks like the both drivers got a little bit of contact there on and have right. run wide onto the grass recovering onto Still the track there. just in front of me i've got a car on my inside somewhere in going to slip past andrex as he was actually recovering from a Still race there. cut track yeah. penalty however i've gone and lost the Still position right. now to ussr alex he slipped up the inside of me on the exit of that corner and also obviously tucked in in front into the hairpin here so a little bit of action going on in front and also behind us at the moment trying to get a decent run coming through the Schumacher rest is managing to keep hold of the cars it looked like it did have a slight moment through the mid corner you can see the amount of spray there from the guys in front flicking up off the cars making it very very difficult to see the track indeed bringing the car all the way over to the left to open up this corner it looked like there's a little bit of contact there between myself and Andrex he thought I ran a little bit too wide and was going to miss the apex of the corner and try to tuck up my inside however I just did not see him in the mirrors my eyes were looking forwards at the time and didn't see that one coming unfortunately the crew chief didn't recognize that either and didn't call it out either so there's a little bit of contact there between us two which is unfortunate he did actually suffer some aero damage from but that as well and two. obviously oh, him being my teammate six. makes that even more frustrating as we would have liked to have worked together to try and work our way up through the field we were pretty even on pace in practice however we just couldn't hook up a decent lap in qualifying it's a little bit too much traffic so yeah frustrating start to the race obviously losing position making contact with my teammate is definitely not the race start to the season that I would have liked to have had however we have got the best part of 27 
to 26 odd laps left so there's plenty that can still happen within this first race and as you can see P7 and P6 are just here in front of me. P5 has disappeared up off the road. You can just about see him off in the distance. I'm going to see now if we can hang with these guys and potentially capitalise on any mistakes. See if we can try and settle into this race and try and build a rhythm. Um, see if we can mount any sort of challenge from there. And also, obviously, the weather conditions as well. At the moment, it is rather foggy with rain and the forecast was for it to become drier so there is a possibility of some dry running in this race as well we'll see how that plays out so get a little bit of oversteer there as we come onto the power coming out of the hairpin coming into the Schumacher S is looking like we're hooking up the inside a little bit tighter than USSR Alex in front of us did so we're getting a little bit of time here Your brake temperatures are fine, on mate. him as he seems to have dropped back from the roof just in front of him Let's see if we could try and get a decent run coming out the exit of this right hander here. You see, fighting the car a little bit in these wet conditions. It's very, very easy to just put the power down and the rear wheels to spin up. And of course, even more so as we're not running traction control and we don't run with ABS either. So it's quite easy to lock the brakes. Plus that with the new tyre model certainly makes for... Some very interesting two, driving. I've had to adjust five. my driving style to basically work with the new heating model as it is very, very easy to overheat the tyres. You've got to be a lot, lot smoother than you had previously. And obviously, couple of that with the rain being smooth helps just that little bit more. So, and a decent run there through the first corner. It looks like we're hanging with these two guys and it looks like we've got a bit of a gap to Maisie behind us who's in the Audi R8. He has managed to slip past Andrex in our previous incident a lap or two ago. And it looks like Alex there has gone and spun off to the right hand side of the track a little bit. Got a little bit of a half spin and that's gone and gifted me P7. So now I've got uh, Papand just in front of us and as you saw there, the car just washing out a little bit upon corner entry. It's going to mess up my line slightly through the right-hander. We were initially a few hundredths up on my previous fastest first sector time. And the gap has increased to Papand just in those two corners alone. However, we're getting a decent run through the hairpin there. Gap now roughly about 1.8 seconds. So we're going to see if we can get a decent run through here. Just a slight lift coming through the Schumacher S as in the dry. It is completely flat out. However, in these wet conditions, after the lift slightly, you can, if you get the line just right, you might be able to take it completely flat out. However, obviously, I don't want to run that risk as it's very, very easy to lose the rear end with just a little bit too much steering input and that will cost you even more time. So it's very much a risk versus reward sort of driving at the moment it's more about being consistent than it is having flat out raw pace okay, nice smooth run through the chicane once again avoiding the cutting over the white lines you can see the gap to Papand just under two seconds he'll probably pull out a little bit coming down this start finish straight as we come to start lap five good lap that's your quickest today seventh position the gap ahead is now two seconds the gap behind is now 3.6 seconds and you can hear that the crew chief reeling out a load of information the delta times to the guys in front and behind my lap time compared to my fastest it does also give you the times that the guys in front do and also the leader as well and of course there's also the spotter functionality which is very very useful very very similar to iRacing where it calls out when there's a car alongside you and when it is clear which coupled with the track IR is very very powerful and obviously it gives a huge uh, increase to spatial awareness even for guys without track IR because obviously they don't have any real easy means of looking around the car for fellow drivers alongside them so very very good app is the crew chief I definitely recommend 
downloading it and giving it a go if you're on PC and hopefully fairly soon after patch 7 you should be able to see it on your consoles as well should I say working with your consoles potentially depends if the developer of the crew chief app will be making it accessible for console use and you can see losing ground to Papan now as we come back to the racing a little bit more About two and a half seconds so he's got a fair amount of pace on me but I'm also pulling away from Maisie behind who's now four and a half seconds behind me so fairly decent pace was to get a lot of oversteer there trying to put the power down coming out through two, oh, the exit of the chicane zero. but managing to keep hold of that now coming out onto the start finish straight once again what's our lap time two, going to be it's going to be a 205 and it's about six tenths slower than our fastest lap now. Three we're running fairly consistent now. Four lap times seconds. as you can see from the lap times up in the top right there it looks like there's another guy, another driver there spun off to the right hand side of the circuit is Karki. So that's gone and gifted me P6 now. And you can see that the guys in front are battling away. It looks like we're closing up onto the back of those. Looks like they're struggling to get past us. Initially when Tipple managed to get past Papand earlier on in the race, he managed to pull out a gap fairly quickly. And I believe it is Tipple who is stuck behind potentially Brownski and obviously Kaki I think was in and amongst that as well before his mistake but it looks like Papand is closing up onto the back of those guys now as well so it looks like there's, gonna, there's a number of cars there there's four of them just about seeing them off in the distance so there is one other driver in and amongst all that lot as well Hopefully their battling will allow me to close up onto the back of them, running the curb a little bit there on the inside of the Schumacher S's in the first part, which is what I don't really want to do. If you do that with a lot of steering angle, it's very, very easy to unsettle a car. But, yeah, now my strategic mind is kind of coming into play. Obviously seeing the guys in front battling should allow me to close up the gap to them and potentially put us into a position where we can fight for a position but I do also have Kaki behind me the ESL the leader has just done October Go for Cup winner seven. who is very very fast indeed and was probably one of the favourites to win this race the car ahead is just done two. and oh with that in mind two. kind of running over various sector scenarios as to pace. what would be the best strategy to try and give P6. myself the best the opportunity to try and catch up with these guys seconds. in front the gap behind is so two. I'm starting two. to think seconds. that over the next coming laps Kaki is probably going to close the gap up to me and come up to the back of my car when he does I'm not going to fight him for the position, I'm just going to let him slide through at the best opportunity to do so without losing too much time. And then try and see if we can use Kaki to actually catch and close the gap up to the guys in front. Because obviously with their battling they're going to be slowing themselves down and not running at their optimal pace. So that I think is probably going to be the best and safest way to close the gap. Obviously I could try and just push now as hard as I can and see if I can close the gap up that way. However, as you can see I'm losing time to Papan at the moment. I'm not actually managing to maintain the gap to him. I'm actually losing time and I don't really want to push too much harder as it obviously will run the risk of me making a mistake and then losing even more ground from that. So I want to try and stay at a fairly consistent pace you can see they're getting a horrible line through the Schumacher S's, taking a bit too much curb on the inside. It's actually going to cost me the best part of four attempts to half a second. I was up on the first sector initially. So yeah, it's not all about going flat out the entire time for these races. That's kind of what I learned last season in Season 2. I didn't run the full length of that season. There was a couple of races that I missed out at the start as I signed up fairly late. Just done it too. And there oh, was one or two seasons. Eight. Sorry, one or two races during the season that I ended up missing out on due to 
my availability. So the races that I did race in, I learnt an awful lot, and obviously one of those was consistency was key and the best way to make NJ positions. And you can see there in the rear view mirror, Kaki is getting, or has now, plunged right up onto the back of me. So you can see the amount of pace that he's got. He's gone and gained a good second and a half on the previous lap. So, very, very fast driver. You can see he's actually running a slightly different line than I do through these corners. That one, if I got a little bit more power down at the right time and not quite so sideways, I probably would have pulled out a bit more of a gap to him behind. So he tries to follow me in his M3, which is a very, very quick and stable car. Suit these conditions quite nicely. Obviously, the Z4 is also very, very good through the corners and it's actually a decent car for these conditions and you can see the gap to Papand has come down by a couple of attempts and that is because he is right onto the back of the guys in front. It looks like there's three drivers now so it looks like one of them has managed to slip through as I believe it was Brownski who was holding them all up. One of them managed to slip through and is now starting to pull away from that train of now three cars. You can see the gap coming down still, it's now down to three seconds, so they're losing a fair amount of time here. And obviously Kaki is now just behind me, he's about seven tenths at the moment. He'll probably close up a little bit through the next couple of corners. Fairly soon I'll have to think about actually letting him pass as we get the breaking point. Just right in a nice smooth run through the chicane, but you can see Kaki is now right there behind me. So had a better run through, and he's actually gone and dived down the inside here into the final corner. I'm not entirely sure where he right. is. Now he's alongside me. I thought he okay, actually might have been a, alongside me a little bit sooner, so I gave him plenty of room. He's now on my right-hand side coming down this start finish straight, and it looks like he's eking ahead a little bit. So I'm going to let him have the inside here for this first turn. I'm not going to fight it. Looks like he's gone way too deep down into this first turn, and... And has run out wide. He's going to have the inside here and almost performed a little bit of an undercut left. there or switch back on him. However, he has now gone and slotted in front of me, which is why I wanted and let him do. In fact, I actually backed out of fighting that around the outside as we would have lost a fair bit of time to the guys anyway in him trying to get past me. And obviously, I wanted to lose as little time as possible in doing that and now we can use Kaki to catch up to the guys in front and hopefully potentially put us within a position where we can gain a place or two. I doubt I'll be able to hang with Kaki throughout the duration of this race because obviously his pace is that much better than mine and he should be able to get himself up onto a podium. I don't think I'll be able to get myself up there the other guys are very very quick however I'm going to certainly try and aim for around fifth position as well I'd like to finish in this race and we are currently two places away from that so just following Kaki at the moment trying to follow his lines but also obviously try and stick to my own rhythm Silver Arrow is about 5.8 seconds you can see there in the delta from the bottom left so he's managed to slip himself past Maisie and also probably Andrex at some point along the line as well as we come into the chicane now, hitting that up quite nicely. Parky taking a little bit off the inside on the right-hander part there through the chicane, which is a little bit cheeky. And has gained a little bit of time from that. And you can see he's now about a second. But he has pulled out in, in one lap, one even with a mistake. So. You can see the pace the gap behind of him is fairly significant, but you can also see that they're closing up fairly quickly to the guys in front as well. And that is probably about two seconds, two and a half seconds will be Papan, which is, I believe, is that first car that you can see in front of Kaki there going through the right hand. And now, let's see if we can try and grab a view as we go very, very wide over the exit curb on the right hand of that, which would have cost me time going out that wide. You can see they're down the 10th already. 
So, pushing fairly hard knowing that I can be in with the potential to gain a place or two. And obviously also trying to keep up with Kaki who is pulling away in front of us. He seems to go very, very deep here in the hairpin and then try and bring himself back up for a straighter exit. Which will give him a good run coming up the hill but I think you lose a little bit too much time doing that going through the actual hairpin itself and it kind of negates it because he was about 1.7, 1.8 seconds up ahead and he's now 1.5 so not a great line to be taking through the hairpin it does compromise him a little bit however he is very very good in a number of other corners as you can see it's about 1.5 seconds at the moment it's now about 7 seconds to Silver Arrow so we're pulling away from him behind me, he could still be battling with a driver behind him. Once again, getting a pretty decent run through the chicane. You can see there in front of us, Kaki is now pretty much right behind Papan. He's about only about a car length or two back. So now that they're going to start battling, this should allow me to close the gap back up to Kaki a little bit. That was a and then when Kaki five, goes to make the move, hopefully I'm going to be in with a chance the of the gap ahead is now getting right up onto the back of Papa and also potentially making a move myself. Seconds. So this strategy is working out rather nicely so far. Playing it fairly smartly and not racing people who I shouldn't really be racing. And instead focusing on the long term rather than the short term because I could have just fought Kaki I could have just tried to defend 7th position as like as hard as I wanted however it would have just cost us huge amounts of time we would have dropped even further back to the guys in front and it would have potentially given a chance for the guys behind us to catch up onto the back of us which would have made it even worse it would have been a bigger train and therefore more pressure so Playing it fairly smart, playing it long term. Let Kaki go through, don't fight it, and then think about what will happen slightly later down the line. And still keep ourselves in with a chance of trying to gain another position or two rather than lose more. So, yeah, you can see that up by about two tenths of my fastest lap so far. We are about 1.5 seconds behind Kaki still, who is pretty much right on the rear bumper of Papan now. Looks like Kaki's pulling out there a little bit to have a look down the inside but a slot back in. Probably had a little bit too much overstir on the exit of that right hander there and basically by the time the tyres re-gripped he was already pointing over to the right hand side of the circuit. So we would have had to recover from that. So coming up now towards lap 12 almost the halfway point as it looks like Kaki's taken that tighter line again which is going to push Papan out wide. Papan has gone and lost the position to Kaki in that hairpin in a fairly similar fashion to what I did. However, Kaki has managed to step himself past Papan fairly easily before they actually got onto the straight. So now I'm pretty much right there behind Papan as he goes very, very deep into turn one. So now I'm within half a second, which is exactly what I wanted. Now giving me with a pretty good chance to try and push and apply some pressure on Papan as he's now on the back foot I just need to take these corners fairly smoothly getting that one quite nicely hooked up trying to open up the right hander here getting on the power getting a little bit too much power and losing the rear end of the car there overcorrecting correcting a little bit performing a horrible half spin and it's going to cost me a lot of time you can see that the deltas are changing quite tremendously and it's now brought Silver Arrow within three seconds of myself behind and now Paphand is just under six seconds in front so I think I got a little bit too, I guess, excited on the opportunity of the position that I was now in and in with that chance and just a slow, slight momentary lapse of concentration is going to cost me quite dearly with a half spin, as you can see. That's what I'm talking about with consistency because not only have I gone and lost myself about four or five seconds. If you take a look at the tyre temperatures, they the rear tyres are now up in the high 90s and even into the 100s in the left rear 
which is going to cost me some grip and I need to be a little bit more careful, especially through these left-handers in the traction zones, to try and avoid overheating those rear tyres. And obviously the more you slip and slide around, the more you're going to cook them, the less grip you're going to have and that just makes the issue a whole lot worse. It just rinses and repeats it, going round in circles. So, taking it fairly easy, the temperatures have now come down a little bit, which is kind of roughly where I need them is roughly around the mid mid 90s that's where I'd like them to like them to be to uh, get a decent amount of gap uh, grip sorry e7 the gap in front is now 7.1 seconds the gap behind is now 2.5 seconds no crew chief there just telling me the deltas but yeah you can really see that the changes in, in the heating of the tyres in this new tyre model it really punishes poor driving and sliding lockups, over scrubbing the tyres by applying too much steering angle, it all just puts more and more heat into the tyres. And obviously, the more you do it, and the longer you do it, the more heat you're just going to put in, and the harder it'll be to bring the temperatures back into a normal operating range. And although you can still do fairly similar lap times when your tyres are overheating, and you can when they're in a fairly optimum temperature zone. Uh, initially anyway, kind of short term, it is a lot lot easier to lose grip and also increase more tyre heat and then juice that into the tyre and obviously that just repeats round and round as it looks like we've got a bit of a back marker here so we're going to give him a quick flash of the headlights and he breaks letting us through before the Schumacher rest so getting it out of the way quite nicely there, not losing any time to him. But yeah like I was saying, it just, the circle repeats and although you don't lose too much grip, you do still lose some and it is easier to, especially in the wet, to uh, lay out the rear tyres as they won't quite bite as much. It's the tyre wear that is the real big factor that it has. It increases the tyre wear quite a substantial amount and it will knock a number of laps off the tyre life if you keep running with very very hot temperatures. So it is critical to try and keep the tyre temperatures in an optimal window and try and hold them there as it looks like the rain is starting to ease a little bit around this circuit as we come into lap 14 there's a lot less raindrops on the windscreen there's a lot less running water running up from the bottom to the top of the windshield there so this should make it a little bit easier to drive. The wets can still keep going in these drying conditions. Obviously it makes it a lot lot easier to overheat the tyres though. So there's a lot less water to cool the tyres with. And you can see the sun is starting to come through a little bit more as well. Also as obviously the time progression goes on the sun will start to get lower with this five times acceleration and the in-game date was also actually set to the current date that we did this race on rather than the actual race date so we're racing in the winter months so that means less daylight hours and the sun will set a little bit quicker and also means that the track and ambient temperatures will be lower as well which aids with the, the tyres and trying to manage the heat although we didn't actually intend for the calendar to work in that kind of way with the new tyre model we actually set up the calendar and had everything pretty much done and done and sorted and decided and then the patch 6 update came out introducing the new tyre model and it just so happened that we would be running in fairly cooler conditions so the heating isn't too much of an issue, however, obviously with the drying circuit we will probably see some more heat coming into the tyres and we're going to have to try and manage that and also try and manage the grip levels. And obviously as the track is actually drying out, we're going to have to make the jump to slick tyres at some point, so I'm not worried about Stay on it. The actual tyre life of these tyres, as you can see in the graph down on the bottom right there, the hub display. We've got some fairly decent tyre life left. Fronts are wearing faster than the rears. So 
I can continue to push, but as you can see, the gap to Papand is eight seconds. We've got the gap to Silver at about three seconds, so we get a little bit of oversteer there. But as you saw in a previous lap, we're about half a second up on our fastest lap, which does mean that the track is drying out, and you can see they're starting to struggle a little bit for grip. That is mainly because the tyre temperatures, as you can see, are now creeping up into the hundreds. So I've gone and lost three temps already. And that's partly from me pushing, well, trying to push hard. Trying to find the time rather than letting the time come to the tyres. Which is what you should be doing. So gap is now nine seconds to Papan in front. So he's pulling away, obviously capitalising on the mistakes that I've been making in the first sector there. Now I've just got to try and calm myself down a little bit, get myself into my rhythm once again, take my usual breaking lines and just let the time come to me. You can see that back down to a tenth of my fastest lap, which was the previous lap, so obviously the drying conditions bring some more grip to the circuit and to the tyre, but you can also see tyres are starting to get a lot, lot warmer. I'm just trying to plan what exactly I'm going to do in terms of the pit stop, so it will be fairly soon getting towards the time when I need to swap over to the slick tyre, so my mind at the moment is currently thinking whilst doing this race to stay on the wet tyre until Probably a couple of laps time when the track is pretty much completely dry and ready for the slicks rather than trying to get onto the slicks early and just trying to time it right. I'd much rather play it that little bit safer than run the risk at the moment. Because the gap to Papand in front is fairly big. It's not like I'm right behind Papand and if I make the risky move and it pays off then I'll jump ahead it's I'll gain a little bit of time if I do but also the potential for the loss is fairly significant as well Silver Arrow is only three and a half to four seconds behind so I could potentially lose a position there and as the lap times are getting quicker at the moment anyway it's not too bad I don't think we're quite at the cutoff point yet for the wet tyres we're at a 202 at the moment I think dry running was roughly round about 156, 157, so I, re I reckon a very low two minute, maybe a one high high 159 is probably the right point to switch over to the slick tyres. But you can see there are just a few drops on the windscreen still as we go seven tenths now up in the middle sector compared to my fastest lap at the time. Gap to Papan is still holding about nine Mr. seconds. Just, done just keeping an eye on three. that and also the gap to Silver Arrow behind us, which does seem to be increasing. So we're giving ourselves a little bit more of a breathing room. Getting a nice smooth run through the chicane, attacking those curves quite nicely, but not too hard that it unsettles the cart. I was pretty happy with the setup that I got for this race. I'll include the setup in the link in the description down below. You're losing a few tenths. You can see that almost a second up on our fastest on our fastest lap. So 2.17 is the fastest lap so far. Locking up the brakes a little bit there, coming into the braking zone of turn one. Hooking up the curve quite nicely on the inside though. Just being very patient with the throttle. Waiting until the moment's right before applying more throttle application and unwinding the wheel, the rear of the car sliding a little bit there coming through that left hander Let's try and keep it and hug it tight to the inside which should open up that right hander that we've just been through there and now I think is the time to make the pit stop as you can see that called for the pit crew to make themselves ready as I do plan on stopping at the end of this lap on lap 17 which should give us about 12 laps on the slick tyre and we should be good to last the full race distance there and really push and attack. I feel pretty comfortable on the slick tyre with this setup as well so 
hopefully we should be able to see if we can decrease the gap to the guys in front and also obviously increase the gap to the guy behind us it looks like one of the back markers there so it's sort of right hand side of the track had a moment coming out of the Schumacher S's he managed to stay out of the way and saw me now. coming and it now looks like their pit box is actually occupied so someone in front of me has jumped in into the pits which means that I won't be able to pit on this lap I'll have to go round and wait until the pit box is empty and it's ready for me to make my stop. I could the car in potentially dive into the pits now and hope that by the time that I get to my pit box it'll be empty but That's half thought fuel. You've used I'll, half I'll run, your fuel. I won't run the risk and just go again for one more lap so the let's see who is now. in the pits at the moment it looks like Papand is in the pits the so that is going to be 6th position seconds. and we've gone up into 5th position it looks like we've gained another place there and you can see Brownski is now 9.7 seconds up the road from me so we're in P5 at the moment but obviously I'm still yet to do my stop as it's USSR Alex is the guy behind me at the moment he's about three seconds behind so he's managed to slip past Silver Arrow at some point and has closed the gap up onto me somewhere along the line so he's probably pushing fairly hard in these drying conditions so you can see that three hundredths off my fastest lap which was lap 16 the previous lap wasn't a good one and lost Good eight tenths of a second there. Seven eight tenths. So you can see it just taking it very very smooth because if you look at my tyre temperatures they are very very warm. I should say very very hot. They are overheating at the moment. So just trying to manage the grip loss and trying to manage the temperatures. And now is obviously definitely the time to come into the pits tyres are overheating, I won't be able to last too much longer now. on these wets so on this lap, lap 18 is when I'm going to be making my stop which is going to give me 11 laps the on just the slick tyres so it's getting a nice smooth run through the, the chicane now. picking up the curve quite nicely in both places I'm doing exactly that I'm now going to dive into the pits Taking it nice and cautious, making sure that I've got my right strategy set, as I've already set up all these ready for this race, so it's literally just a case of selecting the strategy that I want to go with, click and close, and then the pit crew will do exactly that. I don't have to worry about fiddling and making any last minute adjustments, I've pre-planned pretty much every eventuality, and all good and ready for this stop in the race so now just waiting for the tyre changes to finish it looks like a guy who's just gone speeding through the pit lane there and that was actually from a pit bug where their pit box was actually occupied and they went into the pits they didn't do what I did and Auto, call yeah. for Push the now. pit stop they just went in and that's when they got the message that the pit box was occupied and when you do that basically the AI just carries on through the pit lane they can't make the stop but for some reason he went there went through the pit lane at full speed which is a little bit up as you can see I've now dropped down into P10 from the pit stops obviously a couple of guys are still yet to make their stop however it looks like we've gained time on Papand as well he's now down to just over eight seconds it's 8.2 seconds as we come on to the slick tires just double check in there on the telemetry view that slick tire is the tire that they have fitted which it has and we've now got some fairly decent temperature in these tyres. Obviously the pressures are below optimal at the moment. The tyre pressures will increase and come up into their normal operating window and optimum pressure. But now is a good time to push and see if we can close the gap up onto the guys behind us. Silver Arrow has gained a little bit of time on me as you can see he's now pretty much bang on 4 seconds. But we are closing the gap to... Well, actually, we've got a new guy in front of us. As Papan has managed to gain himself a place. He's about six seconds. 
there you can see just about off in the distance you might just, just be able to see the tail lights the brake lights there at the top of the hill up at the chicane where the two guys are and it looks like we're closing the gap up to them fairly significantly it looks like Kaki has gone and had another moment somewhere along the line and has gone and lost a couple of positions and is now only four seconds in front of us so Kaki is obviously pushing quite hard and is losing time because of that and making mistakes and obviously losing that's where he's losing his time from so now we're actually going to Gain a couple of positions again, sliding back up into P7 as the other guys make their pit stops. And as you can see, four seconds to Kaki in front. Losing the rear end a little bit under braking coming into the first turn. So now it's all about pushing and seeing what we can do with the guys in front as we only have 10 laps left. Silver Arrow is still hovering around the four second mark just behind us. And hopefully we'll be able to increase the gap to him over the course of the next few laps and try and hang on to at least this 7th position I'd like to try and get myself up into 5th and as you can see 1.2 seconds faster than my fastest lap so far in this race which obviously was on the wet tyres as well so fairly significant performance difference there between the two tyres and as the pressures come up and the temperatures stabilise, obviously the sun's starting to shine through, the clouds a little bit more, it's still fairly foggy though. The sun is getting lower, which does mean that the track temperature, well whilst obviously it's not raining, it's going to increase a little bit, but because the time of day is going closer towards night, it's going to cool a little bit at the same time, so I doubt the temperatures are going to fluctuate too much and change a huge amount. Which should just be good for consistency and obviously trying to build a now dry rhythm. I don't really drive too much differently to how I did in the wet. Some of the braking points are a little bit later. Some of the corners you can take flat out rather than having to lift a little bit. But basically it's still all about being smooth and letting the time come to the tyre rather than you hunting for the time so you can see that at 157.4 it's a fairly significant improvement over the previous lap time you can hear there the crew chief just reading out the delta times to Kaki in front which was 4.4 seconds and then Silver Arrow who was 4.3 seconds as I went over the start finish line but obviously He's coming through the same sequence of corners at the moment. Hopefully once we come out of this, these complex of turns 1, 2, 3 and 4, Delta should settle a little bit and we get a more accurate representation of how far he is behind as we can go another three temps faster than the previous lap. And Kaki is extending the gap to me. He's now up at five seconds. So he's pushing hard, but he'll be closing up onto the back of what I believe is still Papand in front of him. And hopefully they'll start battling at some point fairly soon, which should allow me to close up onto the back of them a little bit quicker. So getting a nice smooth run through the hairpin. This should now be completely flat out, providing I don't touch the curve on the inside there, which I do quite nicely, and I'm running the curve on the right hander, which is completely fine. I can do that no problem whatsoever. Four temps up. Coming into the final sector, getting a nice smooth run through there, opening up this corner and just being patient, waiting for the opportune moment to get on the throttle and try and open up the wheel the and reduce that steering angle to reduce the scrubbing. Should help with the front left and keep its temperature at a reasonable rate. As you can see there, kind of the front's kind of around a high or should I say mid 80 at the moment and then the rears are at a low 80 which is fine fairly happy with that the it's in the lower end of the optimal window but it's in the optimal window that last lap was and you can see that still providing plenty of grip still Your going faster than the previous lap the gap behind is now 4.6 seconds and as you just heard once again from the crew chief losing a a little bit of time to Kaki in front, roughly about a second a lap, but gaining a couple of temps and pulling away from Silver behind me. So, kind of just running my own race at the moment. 
obviously got plenty of clear air behind and also in front of me. And now it's all just about trying to bang in these consistent lap times. As you saw there, nine thousandths of a second off my fastest sector one. So very, very good consistency so far in this race. And it's just about being smooth trying to avoid making any mistakes and trying not to zone out too much so I want to try and keep the concentration levels up I want to try and get into some sort of zone where you do just tend to drive and you don't really think about too much as you can see there are three temps up in the middle sector on the previous fastest lap as it looked like someone was just there behind me. That was actually Papan. So I'm going to slip up into sixth position. He's going to make a mistake somewhere along the line. So that's going to gifted me a position. I did actually see him in front of me spin off. However, I saw the his headlights light up the cockpit. Hopefully, you guys saw that as well. And if you see down in the position counter down in the bottom left there, Papan is now behind me. He's now two seconds behind. So he's had a off track half spin moment somewhere along the line which has allowed both me and Karki to step through. Karki hasn't lost any time, he's still eked out another second or so on the previous lap, he's now 6.4 seconds up ahead, so yeah, Trapan making a mistake that's going to give to me sixth position as you've just seen there, I've also going to set a new personal best with a 156.7 which is a very, very good lap time here in the dry in these cooler conditions. When I was running in the dry conditions, doing some very early setup work, I was kind of doing high 156, low 157 at the time. And then once I got a, a bit of a baseline setup, that's when I switched to the dry, the sorry, the wet conditions, and actually started working on the setup for those that I would end up using in this race. So, yeah, good pace so far. Hopefully, can continue this consistency. Hopefully, we'll be able to eke out another 10 for 2 on the lap times and see if we can potentially gain any more positions from people making mistakes. To get a horrible line through the Schumacher S's, didn't quite put enough steering input into the left hander, which kind of tightened up the right a little bit and ended up kind of running straight towards the kerb on the inside there and running a little bit too much of that let's back out the throttle a little bit so all four wheels went up onto the kerb and obviously I didn't want to risk losing the car, I didn't want to touch grass on the inside either there's also gravel just beyond that as well which will unsettle the car even more you can see using second gear through the chicane now rather than first gear like I was in the wet not quite slowing down just as much Still trying to avoid the guy ahead was putting all four wheels over the white lines. Four. Come now to complete lap 23. The gap ahead is now 6.8 seconds. I just hear Crew Tree reading out the delta to Kaki in front of me as he continues to recount the gap. Once again, another very nice, consistent, fast lap time 156.8. So only a tenth off the previous fastest lap. And we can see now that Brownski is the person in front. So it looks like Karki has managed to slip past Brownski. Brownski is now six seconds up the road from me. So he was the driver who was holding up the guys earlier on in the race. As I go a tenth faster in the first sector. Yeah, Brownski was the guy who was holding up the train of cars earlier in the first half of the race in the wet conditions. And I felt like I was closing up onto the back of him during that time a little bit. Of course, it was very slow that I was catching him up, but nonetheless, I was still slowly eking out a tenth here or there. So I feel like I've got the edge over Brownski at the moment, and I'm going to try and push and see if we can close that gap up a little bit. As you can see, already it's starting to come down as we go five hundredths of a second faster than the fastest lap at the moment. Gap is now five seconds, so taking a fair amount of him, a fair amount of time out of him on this lap alone. Down from six, down to five seconds. And we haven't even completed the lap yet, so that's about a second, and obviously we've got five, six laps to go. 
as we come now up towards the back marker once again giving a quick flash of the headlights looks like he's going to hold his line coming through the final corner so I'm going to have to get a decent run out of here use the slipstream he moves over to the right hand side of the track and gets out of the way quite nicely Still there. on this straight as we now go two tenths faster than the fastest that was a 1.56.5 and it looks like Brownski has eked up a couple of attempts on me whilst I try to work my way past the back marker the gap is now it's now creeping back up to six seconds so it's now going back down towards 5.5 obviously once we get out of these complex of corners we'll get a more accurate representation of the actual gap we get a good smooth run out of there and it looks like it's down at 5.5 seconds so we're going to have to push hard if we want to close up onto the back of him and mount a challenge before the end of the race obviously only five laps from raining and now two attempts down on the fastest first sector time but tyre temperatures are in a very very good position at the moment still in the 80s range still in the optimal window the pressures would have settled down by now and it'll be up at optimal pressure looks like we're increasing the gap to Papand behind us is now three seconds he's probably caught up to the back marker and he's probably trying to work his way past him as the gap is now five seconds to Brownski in front so it looks like we've gained a tenth on our fastest lap time we were two tenths down we're now only one tenth down so let's see if we can get a decent final sector hit. Which we should be able to do. It should be quicker than the previous fastest lap. Was obviously I was compromised a little bit coming through this chicane here. And then obviously the final corner because of the back marker. Obviously with clear air in front of me. I can attack these corners a little bit more. Should get a good run coming out onto the start finish straight. This tyre is providing plenty of a grip. You're a few tenths you see down there, sector one. three thousandths of a second on my fastest lap, so three, very, very good consistency the gap in front so now. far as we come into the latter stages the of this race. Tyre temperatures looking good still. And you can see there, the gap is now under five seconds to Brownski in front, so slowly but surely we are eking this gap down, eating away at it, and starting to apply a little bit more pressure to Brownski in front of us who will be watching these delta times go down. Papan is holding steady about 2.7 seconds behind me. Again, two hundredths down in the first sector. So very, very good consistency so far. As you can see, not really fighting the car too much either as, as I've not had any massive oversteer or understeer moments, able to hook up the apexes quite nicely just nailing the breaking points just trying to keep a consistent smooth rhythm trying not to push the car too hard should get a good run there through the Schumacher S is just brushing the curve quite nicely on the left hander and then running it perfectly in the right hander you can see that another attempt taken out in the second sector on the fast from the fastest lap so this is looking like a good lap as the gap is now down to 3.6 seconds it will increase a little bit here potentially 3.7 slowly creeping up towards 3.8 so we come now up the hill towards the chicane nailing the braking point hooking up the curve nicely on the inside and also the second part and as we approach the final corner now I might actually go quiet for a lap and let you guys listen to the braking and throttle pickup Last lap was at 156.2 P6. Another very good lap. Now very pleased with that. Seconds. The gap behind is now 2.7 seconds. Definitely wasn't the tidiest of first sectors, a couple of mistakes there, a few hairy moments, let's see how sector 2 goes.
So very, very smooth so far. We've now got the gap to pretty much bang on three seconds to Brownski in front. We've only got a few laps remaining, however. So apart from the first sector, a fairly decent lap around Nürburgring, and even then it's only four hundredths of a second down on my fastest lap. Got two laps to go, pretty much, well, pretty much three complete laps in order to catch Brownski. He's only three seconds in front, just under. Papan is about three seconds behind me. So we're going to have to push hard in these closing stages. Again, one a little bit wider than I would like to on the exit of turn two there. Hooking up turn three very, very nicely. Coming into turn four now. Again, that hooked up quite nicely as well. Not running out too wide. It's pretty much bang on perfect. Looks like we've gained about three temps on Brownski in the first sector as we go a little bit sideways and losing the rear end a little bit into turn five there. Coming through turn six, very nice and smooth. But even then, we haven't lost time to Brownski. It's still 2.6 seconds. And as you saw there, only one one hundredth of a second up on the fastest first sector lap time so very very good consistency so far in this second half of the race and this is where I feel like in a lot of my time on Brownski gap at the moment is 2.5 seconds but watch it come down as we come through the Schumacher S's hooking that up very very nicely and the gap is now down to 2.2 2.1 seconds so we come into the braking zone into the third sector we're now at two seconds pretty much exactly getting a nice smooth run through that corner hopefully this next one will be a good smooth run through here as well as the gap is decreasing even more and it looks like there's a couple of cars just in front of Brownski Brownski's gone and actually moved himself up into fifth position Tipple's gonna drop down into sixth I believe that's Karki and Tipple who had a slight moment through that complex of corners and have both gone and lost a lot of time and Brownski and Tipple are now battling just here in front of us this has allowed us to close within the second of the two guys in front as they go side by side into the final corner we're now down to half a second as Brownski tries to perform a switchback on Tipple as we come down to start lap 29 down the start finish straight looks like he's got the move pretty much done he's going to have the inside line for turn one Tipple slipping in behind trying to pick up the slipstream I also move over to try and pick up the slipstream as well just got to try and hold it together in these last couple of laps to see if we can gain a potential position getting pretty close to the back of Tipple as Brownski's going fairly defensive coming into turn two getting a fairly good run out the exit of their tipple breaking a little bit early I'm on the outside here Clear however I have a second thought about trying to hang it around the outside and decide to try and line myself up for a good run coming out the exit of that corner and now we're going to slot back in behind tipple probably the hairpin is probably going to be my next best op overtaking opportunity so I'm going to try and line myself up for a move down the inside there opening up this corner quite nicely as Tipple takes it fairly tight trying to get the power down on the exit here getting a good smooth run coming out as we shift up through the gears picking up the slipstream now going to move over to the right hand side now and try and go for that inside oh, move getting hard on the brakes and shifting down push, the gears push, push. getting we'll their get inside line and how there's been a little Clear bit of contact between the two of us which is going to force the stuff out wide However, he's managed to rejoin the track fairly quickly. Where is Papan? He's come up alongside me now. There you can see as a look over. He's got the outside for the Schumacher S's. Going side by side through the first part. But he's going to have the inside for the second part. And he's now going to slip himself up into seventh position. But wow, that was very, very unfortunate there to lose out on... Well, what could have been fifth position. I have now also lost out on sixth position as well. Papan's going to have stolen that from me. However, we are right behind him and we do have one more lap and a couple of corners to go as you can see we're not quite on the final lap yet Tipple is just up there in the braking zone for the chicane now and Brownski's just in front so we've lost time to well obviously Tipple's lost a little bit of time to Brownski he's gone and managed to hold on to his fourth position with the contact between myself and him it actually looks like I'm losing a little bit of ground here to Papan there's obviously frustration from that contact starting to set in a little bit which is costing me a little bit of one time here go. and You're there off the pace in sector one. so we're seven attempts now coming two. into the final lap the behind path and it looks like brownski is struggling a little bit with pace tipple is obviously going to be pushing quite hard now to try and catch back up onto the back of brownski path and obviously with sixth position will have fifth position of tipple in his sights and also me just behind him so I want to try and push and see if I can regain a place or two. Doing that, 
has gone way, way wide on the exit there of that right-hander of turn four, which is going to cost me a lot of time. You can see the gap has now slipped from roughly 0.7, 0.8 seconds to over a second as we come through into sector two. Again, a nice smooth run through there, however, and it looks like Papan is visually closing the gap up to Tipple. I don't know how much of what the gap is exactly. However, it is only a couple of car lengths. It looked like Papan has gone a little bit deep there, but he's managed to bring the car back in towards the apex for the exit. But you can see that the gap to Papan has dropped down to 1.3 seconds, which isn't good. We've only got uh, one more sector to go, so I'm going to try and push hard and see if we can close that back up. It looks like Tipu and Papan are going to be battling through this final sector to look very, very close. I wonder if Papan is going to try and mount a challenge that's going to miss the apex on the inside there. Pushing hard, almost losing the rear of the car coming into this corner as the leader goes and crosses the finish line to finish this race. Looks like Papan is getting a little bit of a slipstream there as Tipple goes defensive to the inside for the chicane. Papan's going to try and make the move around the outside here, both in the braking zone. This is going to allow me to close up. Looks like Tipple's holding the inside there and has managed to hold on to the position. Papan going a little bit deep. Somewhere along the line, Brownski's been a little bit slow as well, which has allowed all four of us, or shall I say all three of us, to close up onto the back of him fairly closely. as get a lot of oversteer on the exit there of the final corner. And we're all going to come across the start-finish line. Okay, it's over. With myself in 7th, Papand in 6th, Tipple in 5th and Brownski in 4th. But you can see there, we're all pretty close to each other. And there you can see the final results from this race. So, started in 7th from qualifying and finished in 7th. Fairly happy with that. But obviously a little bit disappointed that I didn't get 5th position. As obviously I was trying to make the move down the inside of Tipple from 6th to try and get up into 5th. And if I had managed to pull that move off, I may have potentially been in with a chance of trying to get past Brownski as well. As he looked like he was struggling, but Brownski was doing a very, very good job of holding his position, especially earlier on in the race. But you can see there as well, Andrex, my teammate, managed to finish in ninth in the end. So some fairly decent team points from this race. However, obviously, if we didn't have the contact at the start, we could have bowed ourselves a little bit more. Mini Black got the race win in the end, and actually F1 Massa was 0.1 seconds behind him when they came across the line. So they were battling for first position very, very heavily. And there you can see the Constructors' Championship as it stands at the moment. So things are looking good so far. Fairly good start to this season but hopefully the next race at Donington will go a lot lot better however it is a night race and there are no floodlights at Donington so it's going to be very very difficult and challenging to see where you're going but hopefully we'll be able to push and play to the strengths of the Z4 and hopefully get ourselves another decent result so we're going to wrap it up there for round one then Thank you very much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, please give the video a rating. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But hopefully I shall see you in the next video, and until then, thanks very much for watching, take care.